Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-16 and we're re-looking at TOS or loft bombing. We did do a video on this four years ago, CCRP TOS loft bombing, and that is still technically relevant, but a lot of features, control, and extra modes have been added. Today we'll be covering TOS bombing with CCRP mode and the added symbology and functionality, DTOS mode, and LAD mode, so three main modes. The longer I fly DCS, the more I realize how important it is to be able to toss bombs from several miles away onto a target with relative accuracy without getting close to the target and exposing yourself to gunfire and man pads, etc. So, today's scenario, we have a small island here and the Russians are setting up a giant SAM site on it. It's not working yet, but it needs destroying. It's protected by man pads with a range of about three miles, so we've got to get unguided bombs onto this target without getting within three miles. Our F-16 will have four Mark 84 bombs. This is the bomb I would suggest because this is not a very accurate way of bombing. So you want the bomb with the biggest splash damage as possible and the most you can chuck out at once. Again, will give you that extra splash damage. So I'm maxing out four Mark 84s. Let's start with the first mode, CCRP. Master arm, on, master mode, air to ground. We need to choose a target, a speed, a sensor point of interest. The easiest way to do this is to select one of our steer points which will automatically become a speed and it just so happens we have steer point 2 on that target. So increment steer point, the steer point 2, we now have a speed on the target. Next let's set up the weapon. Like everything in the F-16 it's easy to do but hard to master. First from my SMS page mode. Today we're interested in CCRP, DTOS and LAD. CCRP I would recommend for low level ingress like I'm about to do now. DTOS from high level ingress and LAD is different in that it allows you extra control of the TOS. CCRP and DTOS are very dynamic. We only get a bit of control of the TOS of the bomb. LAD gives us much more control of the TOS of the bomb. 90% of the time you'll probably want CCRP. So CCRP First, our usual bomb setup stuff. How many bombs? I want to drop all four at once. Four, enter. Ten foot spacing, that's fine. Single pulses, that's fine. And they're Mark 84s. Our default release angle is 45 degrees. That's fine, but that's a little high for me. I want to bring that down a bit. So, control submenu, release angle. Let's go for 35, enter, back to main SMS. Release angle, 35 degrees. And that's literally as easy as it is. The HUD is telling us that it's to the right, so that's unpause. There'll be lots of pausing today, unfortunately, viewers, because there's a lot to explain. Right, if I say pause there, let's just have a look at our symbology. Most of this you already know, but we have our speed box here. In the center of the speed box is the target. You can see it's off by a few pixels, and that's normal. It's a estimation of the target's position. It's really perfectly accurate, but the actual target will be accurate. This circle, as you know, with wings and tail is our flight path marker or velocity vector. It shows where our aircraft is going. Regards our speed, we have this vertical line, ASL, azimuth steering line. The idea is we fly until the bomb releases with the flight path marker here on the azimuth steering line at all times. That will make sure we're steering the right way. We have this scale here. It gives us guidance about when we can start pulling up to loft the bomb zero miles maxes out at 10 miles the chevron shows our current distance up to 10 miles as we close to the target the chevron will reach the top of the staple that's the maximum range when we can start our pull up other information down here says we are just under 11 miles to the target and on current parameters it's 30 seconds until we reach the top of that staple and we can start our pull up. That's all the symbology for now. Once we reach 5 seconds from the max pull up point we'll get extra symbology. Unpause. Right, I would suggest flying about mil power, that's max power without afterburner, that's going to give us about 500 to 600 knots, and I'm going to go for about 500 feet, altitude is optional depending on the mission, velocity vector on the ASL, and watch that time come down now, 15 seconds, 14 seconds, I'll pause it at 5 seconds when the new symbology appears. Pause. We get two new symbologies, working its way down the ASL is a fat line, working its way up is a skinny line. Fat line here is our release cue. It's a timing cue. 
it will work its way down and once it reaches the velocity vector that is the point when we can start our pull up it coincides with the chevron here meeting the top of the staple here and this time here reaching zero our vertical steering bar here at that point will become active it will start moving up that asl our job at that point is to aft stick to ensure that our velocity vector here follows that vertical steering bar as best we can we can never do it perfectly but we just have to do the best we can if we did follow it perfectly it would ensure that we're pitching up to achieve a 4g pull up which is our optimal g then if all goes well and assuming we've pressed and held the weapon release button when we start our pull up and we reach the designated angle, in this case 35 degrees, the bombs will drop. And pause, there is one more cue to show you, which is when we reach two seconds. And um, pause, when we reach two seconds from the max pull up range, we'll get the circle. It starts solid and then it goes dotted. It stays for two seconds. That is our max toss anticipation cue. It's just a warning to say in two seconds time, you need to pull up. Right, as soon as that circle disappears, we'll push and hold weapon release, we'll aft stick, we'll chase our vertical steering bar, and the rest is all done by itself. Unpause. Push and hold and chase that guy. Chase it up, 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 chase it up. Try and stay on the azimuth steering line and it will... There, pause. It dropped at about 35 degrees. Quite often, it won't achieve the exact angle that you specified, and that's because it's dynamic. It changes based on your speed and your G and all kinds of other stuff. Bombs are out, and let's just check exactly what range we exposed ourselves to. 3.76 miles, so well outside of the man pad range. Right, we can't do anything now, so unpause. Countermeasures out. We're going to get the chuff out of here. And we can follow our bombs. Oh, don't hit each other. God, what kind of accuracy we get will depend on how well i performed the pull up if i slewed off to the side it's obviously going to be inaccurate and so on if i did pause if i did any sudden jerks in pitch it will also put the uh, weapon computer off and cause inaccuracies well that one amazingly was pretty much perfect for a first go so i'm happy with that and we destroyed the site that is ccrp with the added symbologies that we have next let's try detos dive toss so if ccrp is for pre-designated targets attacking from low level dive toss is from attacking from medium or high level on pre-designated or targets of opportunity and we'll do the targets of opportunity here so master arm on check air to ground check let's start with the spear steer point two again bombing mode is going to be dive toss set the bombs up so i want four to release please enter release angle again 45 degrees i think you can get the maximum range at 45 degrees but it's a bit high for me i don't like lofting so high so i'm going to put it down at 35 degrees again and i'll take the hit in range okay back to main page and that's us ready to go so this time we are attacking from a few thousand feet unpause and we're gonna find the target this time I'm going to try and do it without pausing so much, if I have to a little bit. Um, the diamond is now showing the speed. The box is now on the velocity vector. And that's because we now have the option of correcting our target visually. That's the idea. We're up at medium altitude. We can now see the target. So we're going to use radar cursor switch up, down, left, right to move that box. At that point, it will not be terrain stabilized. To terrain stabilize it or designate it, you might say, TMS up and to undesignate TMS down. Let's go and do all of that now. So move it onto a target let's say i want to bomb that left bit there tms up okay Des designated ready to go i don't like that undesignate tms down and start again uh, i want that bit there right otherwise it's exactly the same symbology as we saw with the ccip we're diving so we can get faster and we can naturally loft the bomb a bit further in this mode three two where's the circle there it is Push and hold, chase the guy, chase the guy, chase the guy. Back on the line. Uh, come on. I'm hideously bad at this, I'm aware. But right, let's see what range we got out of interest. I'm not trying to max the range out here, but there you go. Half mile further than the last time. Let's see how accurate we got. You can see they're in line with that left radar, which is the one that I went for. Looks like we're going to be a little bit long. Little bit long. Reasons for that? Well, 
I probably designated in a slightly the wrong place. You rem remember that little box isn't perfectly accurate and that's because it's supposed to be like that. The sim itself is perfectly accurate. It's all binary zeros and ones, but it's trying to simulate an aircraft that has to deal with real life conditions and have real life inaccuracies. So in this case, we shot a little bit long. Finally, LAD mode. This is an interesting one. It's kind of similar, but it gives us more control of the trajectory of the bomb. I'll show you what I mean. So, air to ground, select the steer point, mode, LAD, ripple, 4, enter, control, loft angle, I don't know, uh, let's say 30 degrees, a little bit lower, because this one's a bit harder to do, enter. Right, 30 degrees. Next, we need to go to our LAD options here, so click on LAD. We have three options, PR, TOF, and MRA. PR, pull up range in thousands of feet. This should be set according to the angle of loft. We set 30 degrees. 30 degrees equates to about 40,000 feet. Out of interest, 45 degrees equates to about 45,000 feet and 20 degrees to 35,000 feet, and you can interpolate in between. Like I said, this is giving us the maximum control of the loft. It's important that you get these figures right, otherwise the bomb drop just doesn't work. It won't release. So, 30 degrees, 40,000 feet, 400, zero, zero, enter. Time of flight, 28 seconds by default, and I've never understood any reason to change it, so leave it. Next, minimum release altitude. This is an odd one. We need to be at this altitude within five seconds of the maximum pull-up cue. So within five seconds of starting the loft, you need to be at this altitude. 1100 may be a bit difficult for us to achieve because we're going to go low. So let's just put, I don't know, uh, 600. Enter. All right, set back. 30 degrees, 40,000 feet, 28 seconds, 600 feet. The symbologies are going to be a little bit different or we're missing symbologies. We won't get the anticipation circle and we won't get the uh, scale here. The other symbologies we will have. So altitude is important. I'm going to already get on the 600 feet now. You can see the timing cue coming down. I'm going to pause it there. When we do get to our maximum release point, the vertical steering bar will rise and we will chase it again. But the way we will chase it will be a bit different in that it will stop at the 30 degrees that we've put in and we must keep flying at that 30 degrees until the bomb releases. So let me show you. Unpause. Weapon release hold, chase the bar, and it's going to stop at 30 or whatever I put in. I think it was 30, wasn't it? There, and hold it there as best you can. It's not easy, and you want to do it as smooth as possible so the computer can keep up with you. Come on, please release. Yes, I think they released. Yeah, nice. Out of interest. What range did we get? Uh, shortest one so far, 3.7 miles. Off they go. And boom, bang on cue. Slightly shy. Right, that is uh, TOS slash loft bombing with CCRP, DTOS, and LAD. I hope that was useful, and bye-bye.